current pandemic has created panic across the country with schools and religious houses of worship shutting down. With about the, um, what about the work space? Some people have said work remotely from home may be the solution, but can this work for every business? Now, Yemi Fashion has over 21 years human resource experience which cuts across major sectors of the Nigerian economy with proven track record in leading and executing strategic change management initiative. HR services, delivery, organizational design, mergers and acquisition to mention a few. Remember, you can join this conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wish Your Africa One with the hashtag or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038466. Three. Thanks for joining us, Thank Yemi. You. Thanks for having me. You're looking dapper this evening. Thank you. <laughs> we try. We try. <laughs> so now, yeah. I mean, like, we've had different guests cancelling on us for the last one week. And I couldn't understand why. It is very understandable because of the social distancing and all of right. that. Some of our work, we don't have the liberty to do it remotely. Right. But, however, there are some businesses that can actually start to you know, reorient their minds and start to re-engage in a different way with their staff. So, um, with your experience, 21 years is not a joke. <laughs> you know, how do you think we are ready for the future? If this pandemic, you know, continues, are we ready and how should we approach work for the future? Okay, so what I'll say is this, um, we, who are we saying, when we say we, are we ready? I think um, given the conversations we've had in the last two to three years about the future of work, most conferences, seminars, everybody's been talking about the future of work. So some people are ready. So when we say we, let's try and put them in different boxes. Can you boxes. break down the some people that are ready? In That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm thinking of breaking them into about two or three boxes. Okay. Some organizations have been ready two, three, four, five years ago. Um, some were getting ready and some were still battling with the change that um, was happening in the, in the workspaces. So if you put them in those three boxes, therefore you say that some are taking advantage of the situation right now and there'll be less disruption to their businesses. Others are now struggling because they were somewhat ready, but they're not fine tuning some of those processes that they need to uh, fine tune to get through this very difficult period. And the guys who are not ready right now, I pray they survive after this, after this period. So I'll put it in three different buckets when we say, are we ready? Some are, some are somewhat, some are not at all. Yeah. So how best can an organization protect its employees from this exposure? For those that are not ready. <laughs> okay, so um, let's put it there. Plus TV, how can you protect us? Right, right. <laughs> protect? I, I understand that. Um, I represent the CIPM. Chatter Institute of Personal yeah. okay. Management. I'm okay. um, on the Leadership Council. So most of the things that we were saying today or this evening, there were things that were actually discussed earlier today uh, during a webinar by CIPM. Okay. And we had the likes of Funke Amobi um, Hussein and um, the head of HR at Nestle as well and two or three other people who were talking about the impact, not just on the individuals, but also on businesses. Yeah. I think we are concentrating too much on the impact of this pandemic on individuals. We tend to forget that the business is also a going concern. Yeah. After this period is over, what's going to happen to the businesses? So things were considered from those perspectives. Okay. So how do we protect the individual? I think one of the one of the major um, highlights of the webinar today was communications management. We really need to put out the right communication out there. If you notice now, there is a bit of fear, not a bit, a lot of yeah, fear, a lot fear of yes. around. I mean, yes. I, I get to read so many. Um, um, comments and posts on different platforms instilling fear into people. Maybe rightly so because of no one has said this kind of a thing before. Yeah, right. Exactly. So people are afraid. But I think what we can do as an organization, first and foremost, to protect our employees is to make sure that the right sort of communication well. goes out to yeah. them okay. in terms of getting ready, being prepared, the social distancing thing. Yeah. We can reduce the fear and just help people to get through this period by telling them the things to do and the things not to do. That's the first thing, communications management. 
Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have a work policy in Nigeria for situations like a pandemic? For example, Facebook is giving um, 45,000 of their employees $1,000 to, you know, help them <laughs> in this trying times. Right. So, <laughs> I wish I was a star of Facebook right now. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, um, we might not have, again, um, talking about the future that's upon us right now, some policies will be, we wouldn't have a choice, but those policies, this is where, again, the agility of organizations and human resources professionals will come into play. They need to quickly help organizations and individuals, employees, to go through that process by putting the right policies. Um, and it's not like I said earlier, it's not just the organization, those policies must protect the organization as well. Mm -hmm. We don't want people to get the $1,000 equivalent, 360,000 naira, mm -hmm. and then at 10 o'clock you call them and they're still sleeping. Mm -hmm. Because we're saying so working that, from home. So that actually leads to the next question. How right. important is it for an organization to know how well they're supposed to um, track, um, their employees? track their employees mm -hmm. and know that they're actually uh, maximizing their, their potential? Yes. Again, it comes back to the first category of organizations, those who are ready. Mm -hmm. By now, controls are in place the right tools are in place, the right technology to right track and monitor. Such as. I mean, I, if, you are, if you are online right now and working with me, there, there are tools that will let me know that you're online. Okay. IT tools. Yes. So. There are IT tools that will let me know that you're mm. offline. Exactly. Again, let's not manage people by the number of hours they're online or offline. Let's manage people by, by the deliverables. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What are you expecting them to do? You and I know, even if people are in their offices, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they're working. True. Some are on Facebook, social media, and all of that. Doesn't mean they're working. So it's not the time to say you're working from home or flexible work hours, but let me monitor you by calling you every one hour to see if you're going to pick the phone or you're sleeping or you're in the market. No. Let's manage people by deliverables. So organizations who are ready for this time, they've gone through that process from a business continuity management perspective. If, what next? Okay. Yeah. So for a city like Lagos, mm. let's shift away from coronavirus okay. for a minute. Okay. The, the commute, right, from home to workplace is enough virus on its own because it is killing. Yeah. Somebody has to get to work early, so right. the person has to leave at 4 a.m., mm -hmm. you know, get to the office, mm. sleep in the car probably till 8, now get into the office and it's done, then has to wait again for the traffic to ease off a bit so you see People the person getting back, back home, home at about... 10-ish. Um, 11, what's 10? 10 is even early. 11, 12, you <laughs> yeah. know, and they need to wake up again. 4 a.m. That is not a healthy... You know, because we're talking about work policy now mm. for the workers, mm. you know, even without the coronavirus, how are we going to protect our staff to ensure that we get the best from them? Because it is only a staff that is healthy that can deliver sure. on the job. True. So what would be your advice, you know, in terms of policy making for those kind of situations, even outside of even the coronavirus itself? I, I mean, I, I just totally agree with you. For about two years now, some individuals have been preaching the flexi option because of situations around um, infrastructure mm. in, the, in the third world like, like Nigeria. And um, it's, it's been a difficult conversation in some organizations. Again, some organizations have, have said that we do not have a choice. Because of what technology can allow us to do, we can actually make work be from anywhere. Work can be when I'm in an Uber yeah. on my way home for as long that, as there is connectivity. I did say somewhere that um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs has changed from full shelter clothing to data connectivity and power banks. Yeah. Yeah. Because for as long as you have those three, you, you can, can continue can to work. Yeah. So now more and more organizations need to harness the power of technology and make employees work from anywhere. Somebody asked about two, three weeks ago, why do we have all the head offices of banks on the island? And people have to come to the island every day. And we know that 60 to maybe 70% of Don't the employees stay on yeah. the other yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. So why do we still have to do that? Why can't they work from any of the branches close to where they And they're head of his staff. And they're head of staff. Why can't they work from anywhere? I mean, again, it's about managing people from a deliverable perspective rather than managing them by the time they clock in and the time they clock they out. Leave. 
Okay, so what would you say in your 21 years of experience, you know, has been the biggest challenge when it comes to human resource and companies? <laughs> That's You're big. really putting me on the spot. <laughs> yes, I have to. But, but I, I think the easiest way for me to answer that would be my last post on LinkedIn, on my page. And I said that uh, transformational HR is a mirage without inspirational leadership. Hmm. If HR is not supported by leadership that is seen the same way as HR, HR. is saying things, then it's always a challenge for HR to be successful. Yeah. Usually HRs are actually looked at like the people that actually sack and employ. Yeah. Okay. So there is this phobia whenever time. whenever they look at you, they see, oh, this, this manda is going to lay me off or <laughs> the other way around. Um, but another thing I have hmm. to look at, um, going back to coronavirus, right. is shouldn't an organization have some sort of um, screening um, point in their office, not just checking the temperature of the um, employees, but also be able to screen them and test them to know if they are positive? Yeah, I mean, from the little I know about the screening process, the, the tools and the um, process is a bit expensive. This can be done by via um, corporate um, service, <laughs> or social um, responsibility. Especially for big responsibility. Exactly. But again, how many, how many, how many so. of such are we going to have in organizations? But at least, for the, bigger yes, at least organizations the basic like the things banks are being and done. The, um, uh, um, oil service companies, yeah. they should be able to do that. I mean, so the big, the big guys are actually yes. doing more than the basics. But at least we but expect that testing. the basics are done. Basics, let me check your temperature. I mean, I've been to two or three um, business spaces today. And before going to the front door, the yes. first thing they say, please, can we test you? And then they hand you your hand sanitizer. And, uh, immediately. What's so some sort of protection, at least the basics. But I agree so. that maybe a bit more can yes, be done. Yes, because people in, can. Especially organizations that can afford it. Exactly. But then those things are not cheap. So when we move to organizations that cannot...